did say, he said, if any man comes after me and hates not his mother and uh, father and brother and sister and his wife and his children and his own life also, then he's not worthy to be my disciple. But I've had them uh, actually twisted and sort of used against me at times mm -hmm. and uh, completely taken out of context because, yes, it does say that, but it's really talking about anything that we would would put over God, you know, that we'd make an idol over Him, not to love mm -hmm. anything more than Him. But as far as family goes, that is uh, one of the, the number one things that is dearest to God's heart. In fact, He established family before Amen. He established the church. Amen. You know, He made man, and He said, it's not good that you be alone, so He made a help me. And not only did He stop there, but He said, you two be fruitful and multiply and bring Amen. this to earth. Amen. So family is very dear to God. Yes, very, very dear is. to God. And, uh, it's something that's very dear to my heart because you see it, it lacking in um, in the church today, you know. And sometimes we can put ministry, we can get out of balance, you know. We, we, we equate being busy for God and mm -hmm. doing things for God, mm -hmm. um, and we can let our family fall to the wayside. That's and exciting. now there are times now that uh, we have raised, now I say we, I've not had any kids, but uh, I've helped raise my sister, thank you, man. And, uh, and uh, having the privilege of helping raise my little nephew. Um, because the Bible says that, you know, train up a child in the way they'll go. When they're older, they won't depart, uh, won't depart from it. That don't mean that they won't go and try to test the waters and rebel at times, you know, yeah, because true? no matter how, how well we're raising them, sometimes that can happen. And that all comes down to the, uh, uh, the greatest, one of the greatest gifts, and we can see it's sort of a double-edged sword, uh, one of the greatest gifts, something that God values so much that it costed him two different creations. Mm -hmm. And that was our free will. Mm -hmm. And we look and we see how it costed God the angelic creation. You know, a third of them rebelled. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't know how many angels they are. You know, we know there's probably at least millions, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps there's billions. Not, there may be more angels than there are humans. We, we won't know until we get to heaven. But, mm -hmm. you know, even if there was as many angels as they were, Humans, we think of that. So there's almost eight billion people on the earth, okay? Mm -hmm. And say a third, if that was that many angels, then a third of those angels rebelled. So that's a that's a lot. That's a, you know, that that's a big rebellion. Mm -hmm. And then here, God's prized creation, Adam and Eve. You know, there was only two people on the earth, and guess what? A hundred percent of them failed. Those odds aren't too good. So, you know, it didn't start out too good. So, you know, from, from looking at it from a natural point, you know, it's like, well, you know, God's either a poor uh, poor planner or, you know, there's something else to it, something deeper. And that deeper thing is that God loves us so much that he gives us that free will, that free choice. Yes, he does. You know, uh, so he will never force himself on us. Uh, but I believe that um, when we're standing in the gap for a loved one, you know, we, there are times that if we could force them, anybody ever have kids that backslid or that uh, went astray, you, you wish that you could force them, you know. But, uh, yeah, on the flip side, if you, uh, uh, I've never been married either, but if I ever was married, you, would you really want to be with somebody who you forced to love you or would you want to be with somebody who you chose to love you? Yeah. You know, so, so that, we look at it in God's heart, you know. He, he gave us his gift of uh, a freedom of choice to be able to serve him or not. Yes. You know, so the world and uh, from a natural standpoint, you know, people people, especially atheists and agnostics, they look at God as some egotistical person who just uh, has a big ego and just wants everybody to worship him. If not, he's just going to strike you dead. But it's not, you know. He, he, he actually done that with love. So everything that God done, he done it with love. Yes, he did. Even though it costed him mm -hmm. what he Mm -hmm. Love the most. You know, that, that was a price that he had to pay. Um, but anyway, if you want to go to 1 Samuel, we're going to talk about something very dear. And uh, speaking of family, uh, like I said, I've had it twisted before how, you know, you need to just cut your family off. You know, your, your disobedience, based on what I've been told in the past, you know. You know, you need to, you need to have the right balance and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, because they said the Bible says you're going to forsake your family. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it does say that. But you realize that 
half of the disciples were brothers. Mm -hmm. There were three sets of brothers in the original 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. And even whenever Jesus was on the cross, you know, some of his last words, he looked at John and he said, Behold my, your mother, you know, mm -hmm. behold your son. So anyway, he entrusted John uh, with the, the most precious person, his mother, his own mother. Mm -hmm. So even at the cross, even Jesus last time, Family was so very important. Amen. Amen. Very Amen. important this mm -hmm. morning. Um, so we're going to talk some about family tonight. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start out in 1 Samuel. And it's about a man named, um, uh, I know hopefully I can pronounce all these, all these words and all these names right. Uh, but a man named Elkanah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elkanah had two wives. And I like to joke and say that that was his first mistake right there. He had two wives. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it all started going south in the morning. Uh, but he had two wives. The name was one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Mm -hmm. Now, Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Okay. Okay, and it says, And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Um, so apparently he was a he was a good Jewish man because Jewish tradition he had to go once a year and make sacrifice not only for him but for his family because he didn't have the privileges we have today where we can come to God ourselves. But you had to go not only through man and let a man do that, but you actually had to go there physically. So you know, just think of having to go, you know. Uh, to Jerusalem, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and not only do that, but you would have to take your sacrifice with you, and you know, you would have to do that once every year. <coughs> Thank God for the New Testament; Jesus is our sacrifice. But, but according to this, he must have been a good, devout Jewish man. Mm -hmm. And apparently, uh, Hannah was a good uh, Jewish wife because mm -hmm. she would go with him every year. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it says that in verse five. Uh, um, it says about Hannah they talk about actually his, his one wife Penina the one who had sons and daughters he would give a portion mm -hmm. but it says that Hannah he gave a worthy portion or actually yes. I think it's a double portion because mm -hmm. he loved Hannah mm -hmm. so in, in other words he loved Hannah more than he loved his other wife mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure that caused a lot of a lot of turmoil in the house and it says, but the Lord has shut up Hannah's womb. Mm -hmm. And it says, and her adversary also provoked her sword. So it was the, the, the two wives, okay? The one who had kids, uh, she, she really should have no reason to be jealous. But even though she had kids, she knew that uh, her husband loved Hannah more. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand, you know, especially in this time, you know, if a woman couldn't have kids, she was looked down upon. Mm -hmm. It looked like if something was wrong with her, uh, mm -hmm. that she was either cursed to the Lord or she had done something very bad. <clears throat> so, you know, children was a sign that you were living right with God. Mm -hmm. And for a man, a man, uh, a sign of a, a blessing for a man was that you would have what they would call a man child, you know, mm -hmm. a son. Mm -hmm. You know, daughters were all right, but you know, if you have a son, then you were the blessed of the Lord. And, the more children you have, you know, the, the better you were. So, uh, but the one who he loved the most, her womb was shut up. Yes. But you know, she would go every year with the with him to the uh, house of the Lord and, and do the sacrifices. But it says that her adversary, the other wife, would provoke her sore, basically bullying her, putting her down. Uh, emotionally abusing her, saying, look, there must be something wrong with you, you know, uh, here you are worshiping the Lord, and, you know, you're, you're, you must be cursed of the Lord. You can't even, you can't even give your husband a child. Here I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's giving him all the children. Why is he giving you a double portion? So she would provoke her sword, and, and apparently, you know, it really wore down and wore down and wore down on her uh, to the point, he says that she wept sore and didn't eat. You ever been to that point where you were just so emotionally disturbed and, and something was just so grieved that you couldn't eat, you, you really couldn't even pray, but all you could do was just, just weep, and you try to pray, but it seems like on, the right words just don't come out. Mm -hmm. And Elkin, I said, you know, he, he sees what happened, he said, why are you weeping? He says, 
you know, he said, am I not even better to you than ten sons? Mm. But, you know, that didn't comfort a woman. I'm sure, you know, I'm not a woman, obviously, you know, but, uh, you know, I've heard stories of a lot of women who, who've tried for years and years and years to have children. Mm -hmm. And they get so disappointed that they think something's wrong with them, you know. Mm -hmm. well, why is God doing this for me? Why can't I have kids? But here, you know, you got these drug addicts out here that have kids and they go get them aborted. And here I do, I just want a kid and I promise I would raise them. So imagine all this stuff going on. Mm -hmm. It's been going on since the beginning of time. You know, just nothing new. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So let's see. Um, we'll go on down to verse 9 of chapter 1. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in shallow and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat up on a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she went to the place, the, the temple of the Lord. Now remember, the temple of the Lord was where the, the place where the ark was, which was the presence mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. So this was the closest that she could really get to, to come into God's presence. Uh, come into that, like the, the verse said tonight, we can now come boldly to the throne of grace, mm -hmm. that we may obtain mercy and find <laughs> grace to help in time of need. Mm -hmm. Well, in the old covenant, this was the closest that she could do, was go to the place where the ark of God was. Mm -hmm. And it says that in verse 10, and she was in bitterness of soul mm -hmm. and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Yes. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaiden mm -hmm. and remember me and not forget thy handmaiden, but if you will give into your handmaiden a man child, then I will give him back unto you all the days of his life. Yes. And it says in verse 12, it came to pass that as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. So apparently he's seen this woman crying and weeping and, and weeping sore and, and he was looking at her. And it says, now Hannah, Hannah, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Mm -hmm. you know, she, was, she was at that point. She couldn't even say the words. Mm -hmm. And it was to the point that Eli thought she had been drunken. Thought she was, thought she was drinking. But all it was, though, she was in intercession. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in an encounter with the Spirit of the Lord, people will think you're drunk. People will think you're crazy. People will think you're weird and, yes. and peculiar. Even in the, in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, they, they thought they were drunk. So here, he thought that she was drunk. Mm -hmm. And so he sort of rebuked her. And he said, how long will you be drunken? Put away this wine from you, you know, you know. What are you doing in the house of God? You know, you're drunk. You know, what are you doing? This is God's house. Uh, and she said, no, Lord. Verse 15, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've not drunk wine or strong drink, but i poured out my soul before the Lord. She poured her soul out before the Lord. Uh, and it says, count not thy handmaiden as a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and my grief, I've spoken there too. So Eli realized that she was genuine, genuinely uh, heartbroken. He says, go in peace. Mm -hmm. And the God of Israel, grant me thy petition you have asked of him. And it says, and she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. So she received, she knew that she would, something shifted. She Amen. received her answer Come on that. You know, the Bible says what things you desire. When you pray, yes. believe that you yes. receive them. So in the spirit, she already, she knew Amen. she had it in the spirit. Mm -hmm. She knew that something shifted, and she went her way. And in fact, it says they rose up in the morning before the Lord and worshiped before the Lord and returned. They came into the house of Ramah. And it says, Elkin the new hand of his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come after about that Hannah conceived. Yes. And she bare a son mm -hmm. and called his name Samuel because I have asked him of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so it says, And the man Elkin and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice in his vow. So this is probably another year later. Mm -hmm. Okay. And usually she would go. And but uh, this time he was like, All right, let's go and worship the Lord. But but verse 22 says, But Hannah went not up, for she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then will I bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. Mm. Mm. You know, we, we, every year we have a, a 
the people from social service and they talk about foster foster uh, parenting. You know, that's such a, a dear thing. You know, one day I would love to be able to adopt. You know, in the future, I think it'd be a great thing, or even be a foster parent. But you know, the thing, I guess, the downfall of, of being a foster parent, even though it's a good thing to rescue them. But you know, imagine having a, a newborn child. You know, you raised from a week old and then have to give it up like a year later or two mm -hmm. years later. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be heartbreaking because even though it wasn't your own flesh and blood, you know, it still, it was still became a part of you. That would be the hardest part for me. Mm -hmm. So imagine this woman here never was able to have a child. She said, Lord, if you just give me a child, then I promise I'll give him back to you. Mm -hmm. So here she was. She she didn't mm -hmm. know what the house of the Lord to worship this year. You know, she's not going to go up until he's winning. I don't know traditionally what it may have been four or five years old when they were winning back then. I don't know how they were. But I'm sure that she cherished every single moment. Every single day was precious because she knew that she was going to have to scream back to the Lord. Amen. You know, imagine Abraham. He believed God for years for his son. When yes. he finally got a son, then God says, all right, I want you to sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. You know, how hard that be. The mm -hmm. promise that you've been believing for, you finally get and then you have to turn it back and over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But Abraham, he knew mm -hmm. that God would lay it down. He says, I know that even if God has to raise him from the mm -hmm. dead, he says, I know that I know that it's going to be all right. Come on. <laughs> but you see, what happened here, though, before Samuel was even born, she dedicated her child to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens in Samuel's life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so she said, I'm not going to go to you until he's weaned. Uh, so finally, the time comes when he was weaned, okay? Mm -hmm. And verse 24. And when she had weaned him, she took up him up with her, and three bullocks, and one even a flower, and a bottle of wine, and brought him into the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. So maybe he was five or six years old. Maybe he was even a little older. Maybe he was three. How old? Two or, two or three. So he, he, was, he was a child, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, she bought the child to Eli. Now realize now this that Eli had no idea what she prayed. Mm -hmm. Whenever he says, "May the Lord give you your mm -hmm. prayer request," mm -hmm. you know, if he really knew mm -hmm. what that prayer request was, he may not have said that because Eli was going to be responsible for raising this child. Now, <laughs> so, so here it was. You know, it was like, you remember me? I was the woman who was. He was weeping before you, and, and you said, may the Lord give you a prayer request. Well, guess what? Here's the answer to the prayer. And, but little did you know that I told the Lord I'm going to give it back to you, so here he is. Oh. So imagine that. Imagine that. Brother, if, if somebody, you know, you said, you said, yeah, I'm agreeing to prayer, and then here comes three years later. Well, Brother Woody, here's the answer to that prayer. Here's the youngest child. You know, the several the Lord. So you may not be so hasty to hasty with you there. Okay. Uh, but she, but she, uh, but she gave him to the Lord, mm -hmm. and as long as he lived. Yes. And I, I, I just love. And if you go on, it talks about uh, uh, about how the Lord is a, is the rock. And uh, mm -hmm. verse three, talk no more exceedingly proudly, mm -hmm. or not let arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him are all actions weighed. So now yes. Yes. she was no longer able to be bullied. You know, I mean, that, that had to shut the mouth of her adversary. Mm -hmm. And you know, what was so amazing is that um, because she kept her vow to the Lord, because mm -hmm. she, in her heart, she surrendered her child, and the Lord seen the actions of her heart, that not only did the Lord bless her with Samuel, but he blessed her with, I think, five more children. Mm -hmm. Did you read on that? Mm -hmm. So I just goes on to say, the Lord done exceeding abundantly, Above all she could ask or think. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in chapter 2 here, verse 18, it says that the Samuel ministered before the Lord, being mm -hmm. a child girded with a linen ephod. Now, I thought this was sweet here, you know, that wherever his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him every year when she would come. You know, you imagine that only seeing your child, the one you've been believing God for for all these years, finally giving to the Lord. And the only time you get to see him was once a year when she came up to the I would say from year to year that she may have spent a whole year making that little coat for him. Just imagine, you know, well, I bet he's going to be this big next year, so make him a little bit bigger. And I bet 
her love was in every every single little toe. So I, I, I wonder why God added that. I guess a mother would only, you know, a mother or a parent can really just grasp grasp that, you know. Uh, so God, you know, what what what's so important about that? God put that in there. Yes. But he but he does that. Yes. You know, every year she made a little coat. Um, That's all right. And let's see. Uh, and it says in verse 20 that Eli blessed Elkan and his wife, and the Lord, and he said, The Lord give you seed of this woman for the loan which she had lent to the Lord, and they mm. went to their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah, and there she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. Mm. And it says, And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Mm. Mm. So uh, all through the, the story of Samuel, even in verse 26, it says, And the, the child Samuel grew on mm. and was in favor of both with the Lord and also with man. Mm -hmm. And it all started before he was born when she dedicated him yes, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, it says, And the child Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Mm -hmm. And I love this. It says, And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Mm -hmm. There was no open vision. No. It was precious. Yes. No open vision. You know, there was a spiritual famine. There was a spiritual drought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was no mighty move of God. There was no move of the Spirit. It was like the dark ages. There was no revival, no move of God. Mm -hmm. So any word, it was precious. Mm -hmm. And you know what's amazing? That Eli, being the priest, he should have been the one that could hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. That was his job. He should have been the one that was in tune with the Spirit of God. But he wasn't. Uh -huh. And it says, and it came to pass at that uh, at the time when Eli was laid down, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And there the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where where the ark of God was. And remember, the ark was the, the very presence of God. Mm -hmm. And it says that Samuel was laid down to sleep. So here it was in the temple of God, and it was nighttime, and all the lights of it or went out, and it says that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, he says, here am I. So he heard this voice. He heard his name, Samuel. You ever heard, you know, thought you heard your name, and mm -hmm. went in and said, what? Well, I, you know, I want to speak to you, and you think you hear his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he said, here am I. And he ran into to Eli, and he said, here am I. You know, you called me. You know, what do you want? And he says, I, I called you not. Lay down again. So he went and laid down again. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. Samuel rose and he went to Eli and he says, Here am I because you called me. And he said, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. So it's right there how many years he's been doing mm -hmm. this and still didn't know the voice of the Lord, didn't know the Lord, the word of the Lord was not revealed to him, but he was faithful and he kept on and kept on and kept on. And it says, Now Samuel did not yet know the word of the Lord, neither was the Lord, word of the Lord revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and he says, Here am I because you did call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Yes. Finally, after three times. Mm -hmm. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, he says, Go lie down again. It shall be if the if he shall call thee, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. So Samuel went and he laid down in his place. Now verse 10 is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Because all the other verses, whenever the Lord spoke, it just said that the Lord called mm -hmm. Samuel. But this time it said that the Lord came and stood. And called at wow. other times. Now, many theologians and Bible scholars believe that in the Old Testament, when it talked about the Lord actually appearing, mm -hmm. that it was the pre incarnate Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we actually have Jesus before he became flesh, mm -hmm. more than likely was here because mm -hmm. he came and he stood. Come on, Jesus. And just think, it would be a couple thousand years. Before he was actually able to come and walk mm -hmm. up on the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, for in the book of John, chapter 1, it says, He was in the world. The world was made by him. The world knew him. The yeah. world became flesh and dwelt among mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'll tell you, Jesus, you know, I know the day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day, but it's, it seems like if we read, you know, 
God was trying to get to the earth every chance he could get. Yes. Every chance he yes. could get. He yes. had to wait out the, the times and the dispensations. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing now. Mm -hmm. Now that he's returning, he, he's waiting out the times and the dispensations. Mm -hmm. He's yes. waiting. He wants oh. to come back. That's what yes. he's yes. 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 But he came and he stood and he called Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I'm going to do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth mm -hmm. it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Mm -hmm. The Philippians 1 6, you know. Uh, that good thing which the Lord has given, he will Amen. perform it to the mm -hmm. day. But you know, here, what he was speaking of wasn't a good thing. You know, it was actually a thing of judgment. Mm -hmm. So after the Lord had spoken to Samuel, Eli was like, tell me what he spoke mm -hmm. to Samuel. Probably didn't want to tell him because mm -hmm. he was he was speaking judgment. He says, Okay, if you don't tell me, then may the Lord do to you what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And so he just filled his guts. He told him everything. And I think that Eli was probably in shock. You know, he probably didn't. Probably didn't want to know that afterwards, <laughs> after all. Uh, but in verse 18, it says that Samuel told every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth to be good. And verse 19, it says, and Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what that means. He didn't let any of his words fall to the ground. Maybe that every prophecy that he spoke would come to pass. Or maybe that where he stood in the office of a prophet, maybe he could just decree things mm -hmm. at his own will. And that God would let any of his words come to pass. Mm -hmm. The power of the spoken word. You know, mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. could have been, that could have very well been what it was. Mm -hmm. But it's just something powerful. How he, because he was dedicated to the Lord before he was even born, mm -hmm. you know, that that the Lord caused him to be one of the greatest prophets that ever mm -hmm. lived. Mm -hmm. You know what? There's a verse before, I think in Jeremiah, before I formed thee in your mother's belly, I knew thee, yes. I ordained you. Yes. You know, I called you to be a prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there was something about dedicating him to the Lord. Now, we're going to go to another son in John chapter 15. Oh, this is one of my favorite stories because I actually had to stand on this. I tell you, this was a... This was a chapter that I had to stand on when I had a lovely rebellion. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Come on, man. <coughs> you know, we think of soul winning services that the evangelist coming through and preaching a house of fire down and having a big altar call or going out knocking door to door. Uh, but tonight is going to be a different kind of soul winning service. Right. It's right. going to be about standing in the gap and being an intercessor for for our loved ones. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because this is what, what I believe happened in John chapter 15. Mm. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 15. I apologize. Luke chapter 15, verse 4 says, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if you lost one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he found it? And when he found it, he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he called upon me, he called together all his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Mm. You know, from an economical standpoint, it wouldn't make much sense. You know, you have a, a hundred sheep, only one of them, but that means that that's just a 1% loss. So in business, if you only had a 1% loss, you have, that means you had a 99% success rate. Those are pretty good standards, you know. I would be happy with 99%, wouldn't you? Yeah. But that 1%, so it doesn't make sense. And uh, I had a family member the other night, she was testifying about this at the recovery meeting, and they says, you know, it, most people will, don't understand why would you leave the 99 to go after the one mm -hmm. until that one is you. Mm -hmm. so think about it. Until that one is you. Or until that one is your child. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. That one is your 
Your your love for that has gone astray. You know, I bet you get any advantage in the world if you go out with millions and millions and millions of people. You know, that's all good and well. But I bet if you had to choose between the millions and millions of people or your own son or daughter, mm -hmm. you would gladly trade the millions and millions of people for that one son or daughter. That's that may sound true. selfish, but hey, That's it's the truth. truth. I mean, yes. wouldn't you do that with Mookie? Yes. I mean, I know yes. you, you've got a great ministry mm -hmm. here, but if you had to choose mm -hmm. between, I'm sure you love your son more than you love me. And you know, that's only natural. Mm -hmm. I would expect you to, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we look at that. Why would you leave 90 and 9 to go mm -hmm. after the Jesus. But it says, I tell you that likewise there shall be in heaven uh, rejoicing more than one sinner that repents, more than the 99 just person who needs no repentance. Mm -hmm. But we've gone down to uh, verse 11 uh, about a certain man who had two sons. Mm -hmm. And uh, most people believe that this wasn't a parable, but this was an actual true story. Because it doesn't say it's a parable. He just he actually said a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided them to him his living. Now, if we read this story, we can tell that he didn't come from a poor family. Yeah. But one thing, he was able, either rich enough to give an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And if you read on down, this family had servants mm -hmm. because, you know, at the end, you know, it talks yeah. about yeah, my dad's servants mm -hmm. have, have it better than me. Mm -hmm. So apparently this guy never knew what it was to do without. He yes. was probably waited on hand and foot any time he wanted to eat. He, he probably didn't know how to cook because he had servants to do that for him. He uh, never had to do laundry. He had, you know, the top of the line clothes, the top of the line sandals, the, the, uh, the year 180 U.S. camel that came out, you know, to ride around on. So, uh, so he, he, he had it made. And, uh, and he said, okay, God, Dad, you know, I know I'm going to get inheritance, you know, but I want it now, you know. And I'm sure his father probably tried to talk him out of it, you know, thinking, you know, why don't you wait, you know what? No, I want it now. I'm going to do this, I'm going to, you know. And he may have told his dad all kinds of good plans. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to travel. I'm going to do this, do these great things with it. And I'm sure he just pestered and pestered and pestered until his finally, dad finally gave in. So I'm like, well, okay, but, you know, this is it. You know, if you, if you blow it, then that's it. You know, mm -hmm. you blow it. Mm -hmm. So it says that not many days after that the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance. Yes, yes. A far mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. Now we think of a far, you know, even nowadays a far country, you know, if you had to, to fly somewhere, drive you, that's still a long way to go. But imagine back in these days when you had to walk or ride a camel or a mm -hmm. donkey, a horse, whatever, it could have took months, maybe yes. even a year to even get to where you're going to walk. <laughs> far country. Mm -hmm. And imagine you know, they didn't have a mail system like we do now. Um, I knew that they were able to send letters and stuff, but it wasn't like an everyday thing. So he may have went months without even hearing from his son. You know, so you didn't even know if your child was alive, dead, if he was doing good, if he was sick, or if he was robbed, or what. You know, just that communication just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we read on down, it says, and when he had spent all. There arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began mm -hmm. to be in want and in lack. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he, and he sent him to the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, mm -hmm. and no man gave it to him. So, you know, for a Jewish family, mm -hmm. this is the lowest of the lowest of the mm -hmm. lowest mm -hmm. job you could ever do. You know, even having pigs was just very looked down upon, and mm -hmm. you know, eating pork, you know, was a, probably an abomination. Mm -hmm. Much less Amen. eating the food that that abomination eats. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine how desperate you would have to be to do that. And it said, and when he came to himself, he said, "How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to eat and spare?" 
and I perish with hunger. Mm. That, that one thing did show how well his mm -hmm. servants, many servants, mm -hmm. not only did they have bread to eat, but they have so much bread that they could even spare. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so that's how wealthy this person was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he says, I will go, I will rise and go to my father, and I will say to the father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And it says that he arose mm. and came to his father. Mm. Now, if we would stop there, now it switches to the father. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. I bet this father was sort of like Hannah. That even though this young man went against his father's wisdom, I bet if I was a dead man, everything that whenever he seen his son leave, never knowing if he was ever going to see him return again, that he dedicated him to the Lord. Mm -hmm. and that he that he handed him over to the Lord. And even mm -hmm. though it was against his best wishes, and even though he couldn't violate his will, you know, he had a strong will, but I bet that he was able to hand him over mm -hmm. and trust him with yes. the Lord. Yes. And that God, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. ask you to protect him, even if you have to if you brought by whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. But I just mm -hmm. give him over to you. I yes, surrender Lord. him over to you, God. Amen. God, you know. Maybe pray Psalm 91 over him, that no evil will fall and no plague come near his dwelling. That, that angels bury him under his hands, lest he dash his soul against his soul. That, that no evil come upon him. That he, yes. that he will live or not die and declare your word. Yes. Yes. Because right here it says that when he was yet a far way off, mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. father saw him. Yes, he did. So I believe that his father was up on that rooftop every day, mm -hmm. probably praying, probably mm -hmm. worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he was expecting his son to come. Yes. Because here his wealthy father, you know, he probably had a lot of things to manage. He could have done, you know, anything he wanted to do, just chill, do whatever he wanted to do all day long. But I bet that he was every day looking. Mm. The last place mm. he seen his son leave, he was probably waiting, expecting in faith, knowing that mm. one day that his son was going to come. But Father mm. said, when he was yet a far mm. way off, mm. that the father now this is the father's heart, that the father took off room yes, he did. and had compassion and fell yes, on his did. neck. And you know, he wasn't even listening to anything that the son was saying. Oh, the son was saying, you know, look at I sinned against you. I've wasted the money. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was like he was ignoring what his son was saying. He was speaking to yes, the so servants. Right. He was saying, go get shoes put upon his feet. You know, he could have been barefooted mm -hmm. because he says, go put the sandals upon his feet. You know, it also goes to show he probably hit so rock bottom, he had to sell his clothes, mm -hmm. sell the shoes off his feet. He had to sell his signet ring because he says, go get the best robe, put on my son. Go get that signet ring, put up on him. That's all right. And we know that that signet ring is basically like a charge card. That yes. Anywhere he went, yes. he could put that seal of the father, that anything that the father had would have been done to yes. his account. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he said, because my son, he's back. He's back, and this is the, what I've been believing God for. Well, and it says that, and it, it says that he went and he, they killed the fatted calf, and they they had a big party. Mm. And it says that the the oldest son, mm -hmm. he, he came in from where he was, and he heard this big party going on, the singing, the dancing, <laughs> the rejoicing. And he said, "What's going on?" That the servant was probably all happy. Oh, your brother's back, you know, blah blah blah. And it says that he was so angry that he wouldn't even go. He was pouting. Mm. You know, Sometimes we Christians can do that. You know. <laughs> well, that person was just, they were posting them last week on Facebook. They were in the bar getting drunk, and here they are in church raising their hand. And God bless them. You know, how many times do we do that? Come on, man. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. <laughs> well, his father came out and said, Here, come on in. And he was pouting and said, No. He said, Here, my brother wasted your money. He said, On harlots. Mm -hmm. We know what harlots are. Mm -hmm. On harlots and on drunkenness and on righteous living and partying. And here he comes back and you act like nothing's wrong. And you have a party for him. Yes, you killed the fat You never done that to me. He said, you never let me be married. My friends are having a party. And here you are. You killed even the fatty calf. The best calf you killed for him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you never. And the father said, look, son. He said, you're, you're always my son. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this also goes to show the heart of the father. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. All that I have was already yours. Yes. It was already yours. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was just yeah. take it, but you didn't. You mm -hmm. didn't. It was already yours. So you need to rejoice. 
Your brother was dead in his life again. He was lost. And through much prayer and meditation, there was a revelation given to me that, you know, we, a lot of times we think it was the oldest brother who hated to see that younger brother come back the most. Mm. But it wasn't. Mm. It was the fatty calf. <laughs> <laughs> By God said, He said, The harvest is plentiful. Uh -huh. and he said, It's 2,000 yeah, years ago. So if it was right 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. that's how much it is now. He said, mm -hmm. Look on the fields, they're white, ready to harvest. Mm -hmm. He said, The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest. Come that on, you give, bring forth laborers into the harvest. And it also goes to show another thing that, you know, a lot of times we think, Well, if God wants it to happen, then it'll happen. Nothing to do to stop it, nothing to do to help or whatever. But there's something that God needs on this earth. Yes. And that is our, uh, and you may not like this, but He needs our authority. Yes. He has to move through man. That's yes, why He says, he You pray the Lord of the harvest. Mm -hmm. Pray mm -hmm. the Lord of the harvest mm -hmm. so that He can do that. Mm -hmm. Because whenever God created man, what did He do? He gave man dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then man surrendered that over to the devil. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus had to become a man to take it back, and then he gave that power to us again. Mm -hmm. And now Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. Yes. So that's what, you know, and in fact, there's one, one scripture where it says, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. Amen. And uh, I, was, I was told that, you know, the Greek, if you break the Greek, Greek, Greek down, that means that if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. Mm -hmm. And that we pray in the name of Jesus, Jesus. You know, we're praying as the power of authority that when we pray to the Father, we come to the throne of grace, we mm -hmm. pray in the name of Jesus. And, and of course, it has to be scriptural, Latin like scripture. That because we use the name of Jesus, just like a power of attorney, mm -hmm. that is just as if Jesus was asking the Father that himself. That's how much power mm -hmm. there yes. is in yes. prayer. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus says, when you pray, believe that you receive it. Yes. Because I give you my yes. name. Yes. Whatever you ask in my name, mm -hmm. that will I do. Mm -hmm. And the Father may be glorified. Mm -hmm. Now if we go to, uh, there's just a couple more verses here. We're going we're to close. Um, in James, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray yes. one for another that you may be healed. Mm -hmm. It says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. It says, Elijah was such a great prophet and so above you that God mm -hmm. listened to his prayers and not yours. Yeah. No, it didn't say that. Mm -hmm. It says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Mm -hmm. He didn't even call him a prophet. Mm -hmm. He just says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed that it earnestly might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth water forth her fruit. That sounds a lot like what Jesus said. Whatever you bind on earth will be mm -hmm. bound in heaven. Yes. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Mm -hmm. He prayed he bound up the heavens for three and a half years. Yes, he then he prayed he loosed it again. Mm -hmm. Okay? Oh, and, and look here. Look, look at this last part of the verse. It says, and he prayed again, and the earth gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Mm -hmm. Who said that? Uh, the fruit, the harvest, like Jesus said, the harvest is plenty, but the labor is a few. And in verse 19, it says, Brethren, therefore, if any of you do err from the truth, and will convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from his death, <coughs> and shall hide a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go on over a couple of books to 1 John, the last chapter of 1 John, which is 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, verse 15. Uh, actually, we'll go to verse 14. 1 John 5, 14. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Mm. That if we ask anything according to his will, yes. he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions 
that we desire to be. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because in 1 Samuel, Hannah talked about the petition. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. petition. Okay, so we know we have the petitions that we desire of him. And look at this. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not the death, he shall ask. And he shall give him life for them that sin not to death. Mm. There is a sin unto death. I do not uh, say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin. There is a sin unto death. There is a sin not to death. But we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and uh, the wicked one toucheth it not. But if we if we go back to to verse fifteen, it says, "If we know that he hears us, mm -hmm. whatever we ask, mm -hmm. we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him." Mm -hmm. So a lot of people may go and think, "Okay, whatever I want a new car, I want this or that or that," and and God will give you that. But in context here, mm -hmm. he immediately goes talking about interceding for a lost person, yes. a person who was going astray. Yes, and we know that it's God's will that none perish. But all come to repentance, okay? Mm -hmm. He said that. So right here it says, if we know that he hears, whatever we ask, we have the petitions that we desire of him. So if any of you see your brother sin a sin which is not to death, you shall ask, and God will give him life for them that sin not to death. Mm -hmm. So right here is a promise. A promise that we have a loved one that is going astray, that is trying to go to hell in a handbasket <laughs> on the express lane, you know. It seems like they're not wanting anything to do with God, that we can make a difference. God said that I look for a man to stand in the gap yes, to make up his head, that a whole nation may not be blood. Yes, yes. oh, I didn't find him. You know, Abram, you know, people say, well, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't change God's mind on anything. You know what, Abraham, mm -hmm. he, uh, he talked with God and he said, Whenever, whenever God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. he says, I'm going to go down and see if it's really as bad as the cry is. And if it is, I'm going to destroy it. And he said, but you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hide it from my servant what I'm going to do. And Abraham says, all right, God. He says, wait. He says, if there are 50 people living in that city, you won't destroy me because, I mean, you're, you're a righteous God. You can't destroy the righteous with the wicked. That would be, you're a just God. Mm -hmm. And God mm -hmm. said, you're right. He said, I won't destroy it. If there's, if there's 50 people, if I find 50 people, I won't destroy it. And he said, all right, Lord. He says, well, I, I dare to speak to you, Lord. He says, why if there's only 40? Mm -hmm. and the Lord said, well, he said, okay, 40, I won't destroy it. He said, well, I dare to speak again. Here am I just, just uh, what did he say? I'm just dust and ash. And here I am speaking to the Lord. I'm, I do this respectfully, Lord, but why if there's just... What if there's just 30? Yeah. What if there's just 20? What if there's just 10, you know? And the Lord said, you know, he said, I won't even do it if there's 10. Makes you wonder, what if you would have went on down to five or three or two yeah. or one? Yeah. He could have interceded and mm -hmm. stood in the gap, but he mm -hmm. stopped there at 10. Mm -hmm. That just goes to show the power of intercession. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we have this confidence that if we ask anything according to the will of God, he hears us. Yes, he does. Yes. And if you see your brother, your sister, mm -hmm. your son, your daughter sinning a sin which is not to death, God will give you life for them that yes, sin not to death. Amen. So we have a right to ask God. Oh, we God. have a right to ask God. We're like the, the person with the, the fruitless fig tree, that the man that in I believe in Luke, he planted a fig tree in his in his garden and it wouldn't produce fruit and he told his his uh the groomsman, cut it down, it's not bearing anything. But he said, No, Lord, he said, Let me let me dig around it, tend to it, fertilize it. We'll then we'll see if it's gonna bear fruit. He was an intercessor standing between that fruitless fig tree and the destruction of it. And that's what we are. We have that power through the name of Jesus. If we ask anything according to his will, we have scripture to say, Lord, it's not your will that any perish, but all come to repentance. I know that you can't force a person to turn their heart to you, but, you know, God can create an atmosphere around them. Come on. Either he can either make them miserable or it says that the goodness of God leads mm -hmm. to repentance. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that, that uh, some say with fear, pulling them out of the fire yes. or others, you know. So so God will have to deal with each person individually. Not, not everybody's going to be dealt with the same. Some, mm -hmm. the Lord can love on them and mm -hmm. pet them and coddle them and Oh, Lord, I love you. But other ones, he may have to show them what the flames of hell look like. Mm -hmm. He may have to get to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my spiritual fathers had had a son in rebellion. 
been a hardcore rebellion. And uh, he actually ended up dying in, in, in uh, my, my spiritual father believes that he, he had his heart right before the Lord before he died because prior to that, he had done died on three different occasions. Mm -hmm. One of these occasions, he was, I say, he was in rebellion in a different state. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were working a good job, had good money, so he and his roommate, they went on a big drug binge. And uh, I don't remember what drug it was, it may have been, with regards to whatever drug it was. Uh, but my, uh, my spiritual father had this vision. He, and he was interceding. He knew something was wrong. The Lord alerted him. So he was interceding for his son. And he had this vision. And, uh, well, and come to find out, uh, his, his son called him. And his roommate died. Mm -hmm. And his son lived. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord took, my spiritual father, he took, showed him a vision in the spirit of what happened in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And he said that he seen his roommate lying there on the bed. And here he was uh, when he died. And he said that he seen these two little two little demons come out of the wall and grab him. And started dragging him to hell. And he said, this was, this was a grown man. And I, you know, what's that? He said, you know, all the people that he cried out to, this grown man, you know, he wanted at that time. He was scared. He realized. Mm -hmm. He thought he woke up thought he was. Mm -hmm. On a drug high, like a hallucinate, hallucinating. He mm -hmm. thought it was just a, a trip that he was on. But they started dragging the hell and he started crying for his mom. Mm -hmm. Grown man mm -hmm. crying for his mom. Mm -hmm. Then his son actually threw up some drugs, you know. Mm -hmm. He actually threw up and he survived. But but the Lord showed him at that point, um, the, the pastor's son, he was lying there and he's at the point of death, oh dear. And there was a big angel, like a big warring angel, big muscular angel. And he and he was there like a big warring angel. He had his hands folded and his back was turned toward me. Because it was like he was there as a bodyguard to protect, but it was so he he disapproved of it. But he was there on assignment. He was just there protecting. Mm -hmm. And those demonic spirits came to take his son. Mm -hmm. And all that angel did was just look and point at him. Shook his head no, and those demons left. Mm. See, my pastor's son threw up his drugs. Well, why? Because one had an intercessor and one didn't. Mm -hmm. That's about the power of being an intercessor. Mm -hmm. There are times mm -hmm. you ever felt led to pray for somebody mm -hmm. urgently and you didn't know why, mm -hmm. and then later on you're like, well, maybe that was just me because nothing happened. Well, nothing happened. It's actually a good thing. <laughs> you know, it, it's whenever you have that function and you don't pray, and then something happens, you're like, man, I should have prayed. That was a, you know, so there are many times I feel like, well, I'm just wasting my time. You know, that's going to happen. You know, don't, don't ignore those functions. Don't ignore those. Functions. We have a function from the Holy Spirit. We know all things. That anointing, that Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we could be the very one that is keeping somebody alive. Yes. 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 I remember there was a time, and sometimes, you know, we, we pray for that. And a lot of times we won't know until we get to heaven some of the people that we pray for. That's true. But I remember one night I was praying, and, and I just felt to pray against the spirit of suicide. Mm. And like I didn't have any, didn't know who it was, whatever, but I just prayed against the spirit of suicide, binding that, take authority that I would stop and, you know, think, well, it just wouldn't be working, but came up and we didn't pray. So I prayed, and now um, I felt in my heart that I was going to know within 24 hours who it was I was praying for. And I dismissed that. I like, I've never known before. Definitely not going to know 24 hours. just my own thought. I kid you not, the next day I got a message a prayer request to pray because it was either an eight-year-old or a ten-year-old child mm. trying to commit suicide that night. Mm. Now, mm. of course, I can't prove it that I get to heaven, but I believe and it's nothing, you know, not that I'm a great person, but I believe that's who I was interceding mm. for and praying mm. for. Mm. You know, but whether or not we see the results yes. here, you know, there, yes. there are some things, some some seeds take longer to, to produce a harvest than others. Right. So don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Like asparagus, I think you have to wait three years on that. So, you know, a lot of times we sow and sow and sow, and we get discouraged. But like the Bible says, 
uh, man of the kingdom of God. It's like uh, the man that sows seed to the ground. Yes. He sleeps yes. night and day. He rises mm -hmm. and he grows, but he doesn't even know how. It's mm -hmm. not our job to know how. Mm -hmm. All we are are laborers and do the work. That's yeah. right. So tonight, I said this is going to be sort of a soul winning service, uh, but a different kind of soul winning service because we're going to do like Hannah. And then anybody that has a lost loved one or a backslidden loved one or just someone that's not walking where they should be walking. They still may be saved and going to heaven. Maybe they're running from the call of God. Whatever it is, that we can surrender that person over to the Lord. Amen. We can be like Hannah. Lord, I give you this child. I give you this child. Uh, that same pastor, it was funny, he, he jokes around. He said that uh, uh, his three sons, when they were in rebellion, that he... He prayed to the Lord. He surrendered them over to the Lord. And just, Lord, I give them to you. And I, I refuse to take them back. And he said, uh, late on that night, like at 3 in the morning, he said, a light shined in his room. He said, his deep voice, he said he knew it was the voice of God because it sounded like Charleston and Heston on the <laughs> <Six> of Commandments. <laughs> I won't say his name, but which is what Colin Woody said to him. <laughs> yeah, he said, it's about your sons. Like, what is it, Lord? I want to give them back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, no, I don't care to you. Man. But sometimes it may, it may seem like it's such an impossible situation. Maybe even God can't handle but it. Deal, but yeah, but yeah. there are no hopeless situations. Okay. Amen. Amen. Saul would be the least likely person to be the one who yeah. wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Mm. So we may see a person as a Saul, but God sees him as a Paul. That's Whoever amazing. it is that you're praying for and interceding for, mm -hmm. we don't look at the natural mm -hmm. circumstances. We want to see them as God sees them. Amen. So anyway, that's all I have to say. But the author is open. And let's just come in an atmosphere of worship and an atmosphere of surrender. And we're just going to hand whoever it gives to the Lord.